Well, we've been looking for summer, and summer is here. <laughs> next two days. <laughs> next, next two days, because Wisconsin's weather changes quite often. So, yeah. So I got a little story this morning. Actually, I did this story for Pat, but Pat's not here today. But that's all right. We'll do it anyway. There was these three people, and they were mingling around, and anyway, come to find out, one was a Russian, one was American, and the other one was a blonde. See, you notice it didn't say what nationality that blonde was. <laughs> so they were talking, and the Russian probably said, we were the first ones in space. And the, the, the American says, well, we were the first ones on the moon. And the blonde just thought, she's not going to be outdone by these guys. She said, we're going to be the first ones on the sun. <laughs> so the, the Russians and the American, they started laughing. And they said, what are you talking about? You're, you can't go to the sun. It's too hot. You will burn up there. The blonde said, well, we're not that dumb. We're going to go at night. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Won't be the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we're going to do our, our offering this morning. And we're not going to do two offerings. We're going to just do one, bring it, bring it up at the same time. So we're not, I'm pulling rank here. To <laughs> well, yeah, I guess you could do that. But anyway, instead of having two times, we'll do it one time, one, one time bringing it up. So um, I was reading this morning in um, Faith to Faith, and Copeland was talking about hesitation. He was talking about hesitation. What happens when you hesitate, when the Lord tells you you're supposed to do something? Yeah, Satan gets in there. So that's what we got to be careful. When the Lord tells us to do something, do it. Amen. Don't hesitate. Amen. So, so anyway, we're, we need to be aware of that. <clears throat> you know, the basic principle God has planned for us to use, that we are to use to supply the body of Christ is that in this world, God had set up a plan so that the churches can supply so he has set this plan forward, and we need to follow it. One of the examples of that is in Ecclesiastics. It says in Ecclesiastics 11.1, 1, it says, Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. That's where people have trouble. They cast it on the water, but then they don't wait for it, things to happen. It says after many days. It says, given and give and after a while, it will come back to you again. You have to start casting your bread sometime, to, uh, sometime tomorrow. It, you just have to do it. You can't just wait until the bread comes before you set out to do it. Many are waiting for their ship to come in, but they never sent one out. Uh, so things don't work like that. You, know, <clears throat> you can't wait until the bread comes back to you. You have to cast it out and then do, let God do his part. You do, you do, you've done your part, then now you let God do his part. <clears throat> give, give, uh, it's like um, if you don't uh, send a ship out, it can't come back. It's no different than if, uh, if you ask for um, heat from the stove, you just ask for heat from the stove, but you don't, you wait until afterwards to put the wood in. After you know, you got to put the wood in first. It's the same way when you cast your bread on the water. You have to cast it out first. <clears throat> it's, um, the key is to give it continually as you're walking in the Word of God's prosperity is being produced in your life. You will reach a point where your bread is coming back to you on every wave. 
is your job to put it in the water. It's God's job to see that it comes back to you. So that says, that says it's not our job. It's God's job. That's where we have a problem. We always want to make it our job. But we have to let it be God's job. And it all comes back to you. <clears throat> you know, when, you, when we do that, we'll continue to receive. The more you give, the more you'll get. The more you get, the more you have to give. God intended for these things to work this way. When you get to the point, more will be coming in than you can give away. So we need to do that. Just like when Copeland was talking about hesitation, it's the same thing here. When we hesitate, Satan gets in the way. So, all right. And with that, uh, Deb is going to come. And the worship team is going to lead us in song. Instructions, again. Instructions, again. Put your... Uh, Okay. Steve Eric gonna... put, oh, no, a person put out a challenge. Yeah. They double up to 1,500. Okay. He'll so match it. He'll match it. He'll match it. Sorry. For one in one Did, time. Okay. That'll be your tie. This will be the offering. Okay. This is Basketball. a challenge bucket. Basketball. I like that. Thank you. No, I'm confused. <laughs> This, okay. Oh, this is the basketball. All right. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Boy part. <laughs> so, that's, that's a great song because that's what we should be striving for. Don't let nothing steer your joy. The you know, Lord has all kinds of joy to give, so don't let the enemy steal it. Um, the Lord calls, in Proverbs 6, 3, the Lord causes my thoughts to become agreeable to his will. And so my plans are established and succeed. And the Lord, in, the Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And Abraham's blessings are ours. Amen. Amen. Pastor Jan, come this morning. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise. I call that 6,000 doubled, and it's taken care of today. And I know there are some people, quite a few people are on vacation or at baseball games, okay? But it will be, it will be. Whatever you decree and declare, it comes to pass Amen. in Jesus' name. And Carly, I always remember, I was there when you were born. What a happy time. Right, Brenda? Yes. <laughs> grandpa. He gets, you you got to look out for Grandpa. He gets a little... He don't like anybody messing with his... Especially girls. He takes care of our daughters. You know what I'm saying? He looks out like our Debbie. He looks out for her whenever... Guys came to the cottage or anything. If the guys didn't treat those girls right, got to answer to Grandpa. Got it? Amen. Got it? All my girls. Thank you, Father. Where are we going to go, folks? Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. Father, we thank you. Oh, Father, I thank you. You are the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're the Father of glory. I thank you and I ask you, Father God, for each one of us, for your wisdom, for your revelation, for the knowledge of you, for the eyes of our understanding to be open, to be enlightened, so that we can know what is the hope of your calling, what is the riches of your glory, what is our inheritance as your saints, as your set-apart ones, as your children, and what is the exceeding greatness of your power toward us who believe according to the working of your mighty power, which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead, and you seated him at your own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Daddy, thank you for putting all things under Jesus' feet. 
you're the head, Jesus. We are the body. And you have filled us full with yourself, and we receive it. Do you receive it? In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Well, you know what? We're going to have a party this morning. We're going to have a party this morning. But what I'm going to do, I want to bring up some uh, uh, scriptures to get you ready. So when, because... God wants everything beautiful for us. He went to the cross for us. Would that be true? He wants us to fully, 100% depend on him. Depend upon him. Depend on him. He wants every little thing. Everything. Okay? And we will share that. But I want you to bring up these scriptures real quick, Keegan. We're going to gallop through these, but you can write them down. And the first one is Hebrews 3.19. We're going to get a fullness of this as we go on, all right? So let's read this together. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. What are we talking about there? We're talking about the Israelites couldn't go into the promised land because of their unbelief. Now, what we're going to listen to this morning, what we're going to hear, is if we have unbelief, that's a hardness of heart. Now, whoever has not read this book, this is very delicious. The reason I say that, I'm not saying that you ha you're a hard person. I'm saying you hard your heart, harden your heart to the Word of God and what the Word of God says, because you're so filled with fear. And that's exactly what happened to the Israelites. They were so filled with fear, right? Were all of them that went and scouted it out in the promised land? No, two of them said, let's go take it. Let's go take it. I'd be one of those, let's go take it. You would all do that now, let's go take it. That's what we're going to do. God wanted them to fully depend on him to go and take what he's already taken the victory through Jesus Christ at the cross. Next one, Hebrews 4.11, let's read. For in Jesus Christ neither what circumcision availeth any what thing, nor uncircumcision, but love which worketh by what? Faith that worketh by love. Oh, my goodness. Now, if you, if you go, you're looking at Old Testament circumcision, New Testament, uncircumcised. In the Old Testament, you had to do something. They had to do something in the Old Testament to their flesh. In the New Testament, you don't do it with the flesh. Now you do it in the spirit realm. Because in the Old Testament, and if you really go back and look at the Old Testament, they really did not know there was a devil. When... when um, Copeland came out with that. I said, whoa, 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 wait. No, E.W. Kenyon came out with that. And then I heard Copeland speak on it. And I was like, yeah, because they didn't know what we know today about the devil. He comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. When was that released to us? John 10, 10. So you have to go back again and look at what it says. So go back and check those things out. You'll have fun with it. Romans 10, 17, it says. So how does faith come? How does faith come? So faith comes from what is this? What? And what is heard comes by the preaching of Christ. Wow. Now write those down because that's the Revised Standard Version the RSV. So faith comes from what is the success comes heard, and what is heard comes by the preaching of Christ. That anointing is the New Testament, and you all have that anointing. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Now remember, the blood that ran through Jesus was the Father's blood. The flesh was from Mary's body. Now remember, she was looking for a Savior. 
just like everybody else. So if we try to pray, if we, we say, oh, I'm going to pray to her, that's what I was taught, you know, growing up. No, 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 no. She was looking for a Savior. She is just like when we leave, you don't pray. for You don't pray and say, Mama, I need your help. Your mama isn't looking down and seeing you. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. See, you've got to take the scriptures and got to find out what it says. And when you look at to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And is he going to show you what's happening down here? You would be very unhappy. You don't want to see that. They can't pray for you. But this word is what sets you free because you take this is the power. All right, next one, please. Romans 10, 6, and 7. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh what? On the wise. Say not in their heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above. Next one, what does it say? Seven. Let's read. For shall descend in the depths, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. Now, if we doubt him, we're saying, Jesus, come back. Okay, if we go into some of the things we learned when we were practicing a religion, what we're actually saying is, Jesus, come back and die again, because I don't think this is true. Now, take that and work on that a little bit. 1 Peter 5, 7, you know what that says, don't you? God didn't give you what? Well, I'm sorry, 5, 7, 1 Peter 5, 7 says... Cast all of your care upon him, for he careth for you. He has promised to take care of you. That's a promise. That's a promise. We also see it in Corinthians, didn't we? Yes? 120 and 122. What has he promised us? That all, all, every promise in this are yes and amen. Every promise to the born-again Christian is yes and amen to the glory of God through us. He has promised that, all right? So we can take those promises and we can, so to speak, bank on them. Then 2 Timothy 1.7 says, Oh, for God did not give you a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craven and cringing and frowning fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of calm and well-balanced mind, discipline, and self-control. Listen, you have the victory. You've already have the victory. You're on the other side of the cross. You're not in the Old Testament. You know, and this is and this is the thing. Everybody, everybody operates in this. We become discouraged because you see things that you want and you don't have them. Come on, is that true? Don't we all do that? Let's admit it. But then what, what we have to do is step back and focus on Jesus Christ. And he says, you've got everything you could ever want. That's all you have to do is focus on me and my promises, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in a little while. Now, did I give you this one, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20? Oh, this is so delicious. I took this from the Amplified. I, I went into a lot of different versions, and it just it's delicious. But let's get something straight. Let's really get it straight. So 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, let's read it together. Do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives within you, whom you have received as a gift? From God, well, 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 you're not your own. I am my own person. No, you're not, sweetheart. Before, what did Adam do? He gave Satan the authority over himself, and we came from that lineage. So now, we make a choice to graduate. We don't want to stay under Satan and go to hell. We want to go under God, right? So he has given us a gift. You were what? Let's read 20. You were bought with a price, purchased with a what? 
a precious and paid for, <gasps> made his own. Did you? Now, when you look at that, when you buy something, you buy a car, you buy a house, that belongs to you. That belongs to you. Whatever rules you have for that house, and people that come to my house, everybody knows my rules. Do you all know my rules that are right? Yeah. Do you like my rules? Yeah. Why? Because if we all have the same rules, we're all going to get along. But if you don't follow my rules, then it's, there's going to be a schism. And see, that's with the Word of God. We have all got the same rules. We can all follow those same, same rules. But if we don't follow them, there's a schism in there. And the schism is now we've got Satan and God fighting, right? Who do we give the authority to? Bring that scripture up again, please, Keegan. So now he's bought you. He's purchased you. In fact, uh, I'll read some of these while you keep that up. Um, you, you were actually purchased with, a with the precious blood of Jesus and made his own. Oh, so then honor and glorify God with your body. We're supposed to be honoring and glorifying him with our body. How do we come across for other people? What do people see when we come toward them? How do we smell? What do we look like? You know, do I smell like a cigarette walking around? Do I smell like booze walking around? They're, see, I can detect, being an alcoholic, like, I can smell that stuff like bang. Ooh. Get it? Now he says there, he says there, you're purchased with a, with a preciousness and paid for, made his own. We are his. He has paid ransom for us. Now, if you had to pay a ransom for your children, them little sweet children, how much would you pay? If they, if they, um, kidnapped your child, kidnapped your wife, kidnapped your husband, kidnapped your children. How much would you pay to get them back? Pardon? Everything. What if they took everything? What if they took everything and you still didn't have enough? You go borrow. What if you borrow and you still didn't have enough? You see, we didn't have enough. But Jesus had the blood to pay for it. And he said he would come and pay the price so that we can know Jesus Christ. You know, I, when I, like little Carly, when you were born, and, and, and little Tony and Sam I, and Gunner, I look at them and I think, we can train them up to Jesus. They don't, not like I had it all these years, you know but we can train them up in the ways they shall go. See, that's what you want. When you get married, you want to be equally yoked, that you agree on the same things. So when you have children, you won't, she's going to train them this way, he's going to train them that way. No, it doesn't work. When you're together and you're pulling together, guess what? You're going to do an awesome job. But see, that's something that God has the same rules for everybody. Same rules. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he paid a great price was another version. He paid a very high price. Oh, to the glory of God, he paid that price for us. Wow. Can you only imagine all of this? So now, we know that we're in, and I'm going to bring this up because this is all coming into place. We are in the Shemitah. The, and I'm, I'm going to and some of you have got this. That means seven times seven is 49, and then the 50th is the year of the Shemitah. That is right now the year of Jubilee. Okay? We've seen so many um, signs from the Word of God, from the Jewish festivals. We've seen all of the signs, most of the signs you have. I follow that. Okay? And I get information on that. And that's so sweet because when you think about uh, Greg Stevens with Kenneth Copeland teaching on this, I was like glued to the, to, the, um, to the TV when I was listening to it. 
because this is the year we are, we are in. So we don't have to worry about money. We don't have to worry about not having enough. But what can we do? We can take communion, and that's that attacks fear. Whenever, now, hey, there's things, all of us have fear. I don't think we're going to have enough money. we got to watch the money. And God said, that is the least thing you have to worry about. He said, I will take care of it all. See, he wants us to totally depend on him. So he says, you give, I'll give it back to you. Don't worry, you'll have more than enough. I know that what we sent, sowed this morning, I know it's coming back ooh, ooh, sevenfold. Ooh, and to you, too. See, when you trust God like that, see, when you love somebody, you trust them. When you love God, when you've just given, given your love to God, what happens? All of a sudden you go, I trust you so much. I'm going to give that situation to you. I know everything is going to be all right. I, I know it's going to be all right. I just know it's going to be all right. I know it's going to be all right. Oh, God. Okay, I cast this fear on you. I give this over to you. Oh, I give this situation for this person onto you. Thank you for taking it. <laughs> Thank you for taking it. Because I know inside of me, because I love him so much, because I spend time getting to know him. Not just getting to memorize the scriptures, because I used to memorize the scripture, but I didn't have understanding. That's why I put that scripture out there in the narthex. With all you're getting, get understanding. But once I started getting understanding of what the word says, I'm not picking out all those little threads. Okay? I'm picking out the whole picture, and he's already taken the threads out and laid it all out. So when you pray in the Spirit, he will show you. And so he had, we're, we're bought with a price. It's the year of Shemitah. Shemitah means that this is the year of rest. But when Jesus Christ fulfilled and rose up out of the grave, that's when the Shemitah started. It's 6,000 years. I was talking to somebody yesterday in Florida. Not Dixie. Hi, Dixie and Jeff. But it was another person and that knows more Hebrew. And they said, how did you know that? I said, I studied that. Really? I studied that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, get this here. So if this is the 50th year, what is supposed to happen in the 50th year? God gave instructions to Moses every seventh day must be a Sabbath day of rest. That's today. This, but what did God design? Did he create the day of rest? Yes. But where does he want you? Coming together with other believers. And people are watching online. He wants us coming together because everybody has blessings in them and right now, those are coming out. And when we sang, it all came together. Isn't that awesome how he does that? So every seven years, there must be a, a long Sabbath rest. We rest every day. But I got to work. No, no, that's, he's not talking. You've got to work so that you get uh, money so that you can give. That's what work. That's why he has, and then to keep you not entertained. But are you doing what you really like to do? Are you doing the job you really like to do? You know, I love what I'm doing. I just love it. Do you love what you're doing? If you don't like it, why don't you get something else? But I'm stuck. No, 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 no. That's a fear. So when you take communion, communion comes against that fear. And you can be free. You understand? There isn't any situation you cannot change. Every situation you can change. So the Sabbath and the Shemitah, that's talking about rest. So God promised that to us. And through that, what does that all mean? That means now what is debt? Debt free. Is God a liar? He said, this is your Shemitah, the 6,000 years. Remember the six days he spoke with Adam? 
He, was, every, he spoke, one day is like a thousand years, a thousand years like a day. How long was he with Adam? See, there was no, no time in heaven. He put time on earth for us. So he spoke everything, and he saw all of you, and he talked about all of you. And what would be inside of you? Your giftings. How many people are finding and following their giftings? to do it, and they love to do it. That's what God wants. But when you find it, and you love to do it, come there and let people see the love of God flowing through you. And you know what? You don't have to act it. It's just there. It's just there. It's you. you know yourself. Some of you go some places, and they'll say, there's something different about you, don't they? And before you know it, if somebody says a cuss word, they'll say, I'm sorry. They know who you are. Right? I had that happen to me the other day again. They knew who I was. But I was able to pray for people as well. You see, and you know what? That's why I like to dress up and look good. It's, it's what do I want to look good for? Because when people see you, you look good, you smell good. Hmm? They're going to want to be by you. Isn't that true? But if I come in flumpy, do you think they're? No. But now he has restored with the locust, the canker worm, the crank. He's, he's restored all of that. So what we're going to do this morning is we're going to listen to Dr. Dollar. And I played this on Tuesday. Okay. Fear. Okay. You take communion in remembrance of what Jesus Christ did. So I want, would you pass out communion, please? But please don't open it, folks. Do not open that communion cup until Dr. Dollar does, and we're going to take it with him so that you learn the proper way to take it. We're not taking for him to remember. We're taking it for us to remember everything he did for us. And you can, during that time, speak what you want. Your marriage is wonderful. You are prosperous. Everything you put your hands to prospers, right? Amen. Yeah. Why? Because God said that's what we're supposed to be doing. So we're going to attack fear with communion. So whenever fear comes up, now, have, you don't have to raise your hands, but did you ever have fear did you ever have fear that you're not going to have enough money? Is it, that's the number one thing. It, it was on the top of the list when they shared it with me. Fear. Number two thing, what are they going to think about me? Number two. What's number three? Whatever's in your heart. So now you rise up, and when you take communion, that's when you turn around and see everything he did, because what did he do for your prosperity? Prospered you. What did he do for your healing? He healed you. What did he do for your marriage? Healed. What did he do in your neighborhood? Right? Did you ever get in a situation with somebody? And I know I prayed with somebody not too long ago, and it was a hullabaloo. Within a couple of days, the person came back and apologized to the person because we set ourselves in agreement. Think about that. Whenever two or more set themselves in agreement, whatever they agree on, it's guaranteed they're going to get it. It's a guarantee because the only thing we have to do is read the word, get it in here, get it down in here, because the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, what did she continually say? She kept on what? Saying. She kept on saying. She kept on saying until it got passed here into here. I eat good. I look good. I feel good. I weigh 120 pounds. I'm going to take communion over that because I do. I do. Listen, you go with a group of people, and that's all you talk about is the medicines they're on and every surgery they've had. And I was like, I think we're doing pretty good, Pastor Kenny. Got it? 
but we won't talk about the medications. Who is not on medications? Same thing Pastor Kenny and I did. We were the only ones there. Guys, it's this here. This morning, in my prayer time, I took communion with Jesus. And I speak over the vitamins. I speak over those things. You speak over that, right? Before you take stuff, you bless it. You plead the blood of Jesus. Well, let's listen to Dr. Dollar because you're going to get more delicious stuff out of this. Can we do that? So believe in him. Oops, I need a... I don't know if I've ever seen so much fear in the earth. It, it, it's, uh, I don't think people are understanding how you can be controlled by fear. Fear will cause you to forget the things that God has already made available. I mean, think about that for a moment. You can be so occupied with fear that you forget you're delivered from it. So occupied with fear that the thing you're fearing, Jesus is already taking care of and giving you provisions. So if you spend all of your time focused in on the fear, uh, then you're not going to be focused in on, on, the, uh, on the finished works of Jesus Christ. And your heart will literally become hardened against what Jesus has already done for you. Uh, whatever you give your attention to the most, uh, that's, what, that's where you're going to be more pliable and flexible. But the thing you're ignoring the most, which may be God's promise and his word, well, that's going to be the area where it's going to be hardened. Your heart's going to be hardened to it. And there are lots of things going on right now. Uh, there is a slow introduction to witchcraft that's going on and you know I was somebody was telling me a story the other day that they got these sites out that gives you spells to if you put these ingredients together and you can get some money from spells and 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 it's just a lot of this a lot of stuff going on well, I rejoice because I realize Satan knows his time is growing short and he's, he's desperate right now this is a desperate move but when we take communion tonight, we're taking communion over your victory, your victory over fear. You must not fear, okay? And so whatever's, whatever's the bottom line of that fear, you might have to cut it off and stick away from it. But you, you, listen to me. You know how dangerous it is for you to open yourself up every day to, to, to fear and the spirit of fear? A lot of people think, well, it's no big deal. It's natural and it's normal. It is not. But Second Timothy said he did not give you the spirit of fear. You're saying it's natural and it's normal. So all you're doing if, with the attitude that it's natural and normal, you're allowing Satan to have a foothold in your life to begin to pr produce things. Let's defeat fear. Let's, let's just, listen, let's just take everything you're afraid of, take everything you're scared of, you don't have to do nothing. Somebody's saying, well, well, if I really defeat fear, I need to do this. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm asking you to just depend on God. Let's, let's deal with this unseen enemy, and let's depend on God. And any time it tries to come back up, Lord, I depend on you. Any time you got to defeat fear, you cannot continue to move around in the pasture of fear, feeding in the pasture of fear, and the enemy may not take advantage of that, especially you who are hearing things like this. And Satan's determined to keep people grazing in the pasture of fear. And you got to let it go. And you're going to let it go over communion by remembering. The power of remembering what Jesus has done and the power of you going before God and saying, Lord, thank you for loving me. I believe your love. I receive your love. Therefore, I'm healed. I receive your love, therefore I'm protected. I receive your love, therefore what the enemy is doing to the world, he won't be able to do it to me because I receive your love. 
and that, that is actively resisting the, the devil. You're going to have to pull this stuff out. Now, don't them, excuse me in my English, but them days of talking about how great a Christian you are, you, them things are over with. We're going to see, you're you going to see now what you got. It's one thing for you to be talking about how awesome of a Christian you are, but now the battle is on. What you got? What you got? Those of you who streaming in, get you some communion elements, get you a piece of light bread, get you some water, get you something, and we're going to receive communion over this. I want to go over 1 Corinthians 11 with you first. In verse 20, he says, When you come together, wherefore, in one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper like you eat a sandwich. Okay? He said, For in eating, uh, everyone taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and the other is drunken. So he said, This is not like a, a meal you eat at lunch or, or breakfast or dinner. He, he said, that, That's not what this is. He said, What have you not houses to eat and to drink in, or despise you the church of God, and you shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread the same night he was betrayed. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, now this is key, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. He said, do this, what? In remembrance of me. Somebody say, remember. He said, after the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the what? It's the new covenant, the new testament in his blood. So his blood gave birth to a new testament, okay? He said, this do ye as often as you drink it. And he says, you're going to drink it for what? In what? Remember. Somebody say, remember. remember. Notice the body. Notice the blood. Notice the cup, notice the bread, all of it is about what you remember, okay? For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily. Now, how would I do it unworthily? By eating the bread and drinking the cup and failing to remember. It's an unworthy thing to eat it and drink it and don't remember what that bread has accomplished and what that cup has accomplished, what that body has accomplished, what the blood of Jesus has accomplished. He says, when you do that, you'll be guilty of the body and the blood of Jesus. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. I'm looking at myself to make sure, okay, I remember that the blood of Jesus is the blood of the New Testament, and by the blood of Jesus, I'm under the grace of God, by the blood of Jesus, I've been made righteous. And by, I, I'm remembering what the blood has accomplished. I do the same thing with the, with the bread. I'm remembering that through his body, which was broken for me, that I, I can be whole for the rest of my life. And I can declare wholeness. And God is faithful to that. God is faithful to my wholeness right now. God, you're not going to wake up one day and God decided, well, my bad, I changed my mind. No, he is faithful to being whole, uh, to, to our wholeness. He says, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, not remembering, eateth and drinketh damnation, or he locks up the benefits to himself because he's not seeing the Lord, he's not discerning the Lord's, the Lord's body, that that body was broken and that blood was shed for, your, uh, for, the, for the grace of God, the righteousness of God, the wholeness of God, all the things that have been made available to you. For this cause, for this cause, for, for this cause, what cause? For the cause of not remembering. See, fear causes you not to remember. Fear causes you not to remember that you're whole. It causes you not to remember the, what the blood has done for you. Fear causes you not to remember that you've been sanctified. Fear causes you not to remember those things. And, and what he's saying, for this cause, many people are weak and sickly among you, and many people sleep or die early deaths. Now, here's the, let me show you how bad it is in religion. Religion have you thinking that if you come in and take communion and you don't feel like you're cleansed or you sinned, that you're going to die for taking communion. I can't tell you how long I came to church and they passed a communion plate and I said, I can't take it today. 
I ain't ready today. I might die. I'll just pass it on. You don't know what I did last night. Let me go on pass that communion on because I ain't going to be playing with God. I, that's one thing I don't do. I might not be no good, but that's one thing I don't do. I don't play with God. Now, that's how, that's how we talk about it. He says people die early and they are sickly because, watch this, they didn't discern the, the Lord's body. They, they didn't take communion to remember that they're healed, to remember that they're whole, to remember what Jesus has done. There's a powerful thing in remembering what Jesus has done for you. And he says, there's power invested in this communion. There's power in you, invest in, in, in you understanding and remember what the blood has accomplished and what this broken body has accomplished. He said, now, if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged but when we are judged, we are chastened or directed by the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait on one another or tarry for one another. And if any man hunger, if he's hungry, he says, you go eat at home. That's not what this is for, that you come not together unto condemning one another in condemnation. He says, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Now, this is the New Testament's order for that communion, explaining to us how to take full benefit of it, and also telling us how you can dam up all of those blessings that God intends to come your way, just simply not understanding what you're doing, not understanding that I need to remember what the blood. So it would, it would be good if you did a study on what the blood of Jesus has accomplished for me, what that broken body was accomplished, so you can remember. But then in John chapter 6, uh, it's even more powerful as Jesus be begins to prophetically talk about the communion that is to come. And in verse 48, John 6, 48, he says, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, but they're dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat this bread, he shall live forever. And, and, the, and the bread that I will, will give, give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews, therefore, strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh uh, to eat? They, they're just so not into understanding what Jesus was saying. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Now imagine them hearing that. They thought they were, Jesus was talking about cannibalism. They couldn't foresee what was to come in this communion that I just, we just talked about in 1 Corinthians. Verse 54, Jesus says prophetically, Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I'll raise them up at the last day. We not only will live forever, but we also have the life of, of, of Jesus, the life of God. We'll also have the relationship with God, the presence of God. This is, this is what this eternal life is all about. For my flesh is meat indeed, my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I dwell in him. See, you can have an assurance tonight that there is a, where two or three shall be gathered in his name, there is he in the midst of us. He says, I'm going to dwell with you. I'm going to dwell with you. What is dwelling? Living with you. My desire is to live with you and for you to live with me. And he says, people who understand communion, not just when you're drinking the cup and not just when you're eating the bread, but when you're remembering, when you're remembering, crazy stuff happens and you remember what the blood has done for you. Crazy news comes on the television, and you remember what the Word has to say. All of the craziness of the world that, that, that pumps fear out there should not affect you because every time you hear uh, the world say one thing, you're remembering what Jesus has already done. Glory be to God. And that's what we got to do. We, we don't have to be subject to the same fears that the whole world is subject to. Amen. And as the living Father has sent me, I live by the Father. What, 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 you know what he just said there, right? I live in total dependence. I am living in dependence. He says, as the, as the living Father has sent me, I live by or I depend on the Father. 
So he that eateth me, even he shall live by and depend on me. I am taking this communion. I am remembering him because it's a way of me demonstrating that I'm dependent on you. Glory to God. I never forget when God said, you're taking all these supplements and you're missing the number one supplement, my communion, my table. Take everything you're concerned about and eat from my table. Glory be to God. Now, ain't nothing wrong with your supplements except, watch this, this word depend. Am I dependent on the supplements more than I depend on him? He says, because I can take communion and just like he depended on God, I can depend on him. So take your vitamin C. Take your vitamin D. But you got to depend on God to do something with that vitamin. Yes, you do y'all hear what I'm saying tonight? Yes, he said, this is the bread which, which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat, uh, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread, watch this, shall live forever. We have, we have something greater than, than the world, and, and, and we won't even use it. We have something greater than the world. There is no reason for you to be afraid in the time of an epidemic or a pandemic. There's no reason for you to be afraid in the time of a storm coming in your neighborhood. There's, I depend on God. I, I don't know where that tornado is going to come, so before it gets in my neighborhood, I'm, I'm depending on God. God, I thank you that you're watching over my house. I thank you, Lord, that you're watching over my life. Oh, my God. You know, over our communion, we take time to, to, to pray over our kids. Lord, watch over them, minister to them, surround them with wise people that are speaking to their lives. We pray and believe God for one another. I, I got to depend. That's all, that's, that's, why am I taking communion at home? Ain't nobody there to say, look at him. That's a good Christian. That ain't why I'm doing it. I'm taking that communion at home because I am dependent on you like Jesus depended on you. Jesus came to be an example of how to live life in this physical body. And this is how you live life as a Christian in this physical body, depending on God. And when I take that bread, I'm saying, I depend on you, Lord. And when I take that cup, I say, I depend on you, Lord. And he says, all right, I got you. I got you. A thousand will fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. I got you. You don't know who you're around, what you're around, what's floating in the air, and God Almighty has already taken care of you, and you didn't even know you had been taken care of, praise God. I got to trust God. I don't know who touched what. I don't know who breathed on what. I don't know who touched the watermelon before I touched the watermelon. I don't know who picked up the tomato before I picked up the tomato. I don't know who breathing in the air and the air got it and caught it and breathed. I ain't got time. I don't know who I chew, I chew before I got there and the spit went everywhere. I don't know none of that. But what I do know is that I got a God I can depend on. What I do know is the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, has been shed for me. What I do know, what I do know, what I do know. What I do know. I will not be afraid. Why? For thou art with me. Thou art with me. Where are you at tonight? Let's take this communion. Let's believe God. Take the bread. which represents the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those of you at home, whatever you got, that represents the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's what this represents. It represents wholeness. Say out loud, I am whole. I am whole. Nothing, missing. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing broken. Shalom. Shalom. Peace. Peace. Prosperity. Prosperity. That's what this means. And I receive that right now. Not based on what I see, but based on what you promised. I depend on you, God. I depend on you for my wholeness. Come on, I depend on you for my wholeness. 
I speak peace to my life. I speak peace to my life. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, peace, peace. peace. And the, Bible, the Bible says when you do that, every mountain shall be removed. It'll be brought down. A mountain will be brought down to a plateau. <coughs> Say it again. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, peace, peace. So for as often as we eat of this bread that represents wholeness from your broken body, we do so in remembrance of you. You may eat. Mm, mm, mm. Peace, peace. Peace, peace. No fear, no fear. Peace, peace. No fear, no fear. Peace, peace. No fear, no fear, no fear, no fear, no fear, no fear. Peace. Peace. Peace, no fear. Peace, no fear. I will not fear. I will not fear what men can do unto me. I will not fear what the devil says. I will not fear the reports of the, of the media. I will not fear. No more fear. I won't tolerate it. I won't put up with it. I, I'm not, I, no more fear. That's it. It ends right now. It ends right now. It ends right now. It ends right now. I cast all fear out right now in the name of Jesus. My God. Take the cup. It represents the blood of, we missed this, of the New Testament. You know what that means? This represents the blood of the grace of God where your dependence upon him See, the old covenant was dependent on you and what you can do. This New Testament is depending on him and what he's already done. Amen. Thank you that the blood of Jesus has granted unto me the New Testament. Amen. Glory to God. And by the blood, I'm righteous. And by the blood, I'm redeemed. And by the blood, I'm healed. And by the blood, I'm, I'm, I'm prosperous. And by the blood, I'm protected. And by the blood, I'm covered. And by the blood, I overcome the enemy. And by the blood, no sickness or disease or virus that touches my body will be successful. It dies instantly because of the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. The blood of Jesus is against you, fear. I plead the blood against the spirit of fear. God didn't give me the spirit of fear, so you get out of here. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. You may drink. Now, therefore, over the communion table, the spirit of fear of the, on this night is defeated. I said the spirit of fear over this night has been defeated. The spirit of fear has been defeated. You're free from it. You stay free from it. Every time fear tries to knock at the door, your response should be, I know God loves me, therefore I'm free from fear. I know God loves me. You're laying in the bed and some thought come across your mind. Just talk. I know. Say it out loud with your mouth. He's talking to you in your mind. Open your mouth up. I know God loves me. Therefore, there is no fear. I know God loves me. Therefore, I'm delivered from fear. Amen. Are you looking for Did you like that? Is that good? You know what? I don't know how many times I listened to it, and I listened to it again this morning, and I got another facet of it. I was like, oh, my goodness, this is awesome. God is good. It's over there. So now, how do I know I have the victory? Will you give me a scripture, please? How do I know I have the victory? Would somebody please give me a scripture knowing that I have the victory? 
I love it. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. When I got born again, that happened. Give me another one. Say that a little louder. God always causes me to triumph. In, the, in one of the, the uh, versions, says, he lifts me up as a trophy. He parades you around. Did you ever see somebody get a trophy? They go around and they're showing it off. Yeah. <laughs> Remember Raymond that time? What did, what, did, what did Marie say? She was a trophy wife? Of course, that was making fun. But give me another one. Give me another one. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And where do I find that scripture? Got it? So let's really, let's park right there on 2 Peter 2.24. Go to your Bible. Go to your Bible. How much we got? We got it. We got it. Okay. 2 Peter 2.24. Let's go there. 2 Peter 2.24. And tell me when you're there. I'm there. 2.24. Somebody's there. Or is it 1 Peter 2.24? Where is it? 1 Peter, what? 2.24. What does that say? What does that say? In 1 Peter, I love it. You guys, you see, if you don't have the right address, don't worry about that as long as you have what it says. Okay, 1 Peter 2.24, what does it say in here again? Let's all read it together. Who has the King James? Okay, let's read that out loud. Who in his own self bore our sins in his own body should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye what? were healed. Who has another version? By the stripes. Now, this isn't on, Debbie. It's on now. Okay, give me that quickly, quickly, quickly. The new, um, the living Bible. He personally carried the load of our sins in his own body when he died on the cross so that we can be finished with sin and live the good life from now on, for his wounds have healed ours. Okay, now that's good, isn't it? Anybody else have another one? How, what have you got? You got the Amplified, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll get that for you right here, Donna. And that says, he personally bore our sins in his own body, personally, okay? On the tree, as on an altar, and offered himself on it, that we might die, cease to exist, to sin, and live to righteousness by his wounds, you were, you have been healed. You have been healed. There's the victory. We're on this side of the victory. We're not in the Old Testament. So when Dr. Dollar said we're the New Testament, we've already got the victory. So if we already have the victory, we don't try to get the victory. No, no, no. We take communion, we remind ourselves that we have that victory by taking the word of God and applying it to that situation. If you're sick, if you get a pain, what do you tell the pain to do? Leave. Pain, get out of here. Get. Did you ever get really mad? You've been sporting something for a, for a while, and you know maybe you're kind of limping or something. Pretty soon you'll get, get. Out of here, I've had enough of it. I ain't putting up with this. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. And then you grab your little book here. And then you say, this is the, the God's creative power for healing. Then you say, every organ, every tissue of my body functions in the perfection to which God created it to function. I forbid any malfunction in my body in the name of Jesus. Who are you mad at? You're mad at the devil. You're mad at the devil. You don't put, remember with the woman with the issue of blood? And Jesus said, you're whole. You know what that meant? 
This is Old Testament. He said, you're saved. What does the word saved mean? Saved, healed, made whole. You guys are sharp. Saved, healed, made whole. That means everything that you have need of, you have in overflow. Do you need money? Hey, I've sown. I expect it in the name of Jesus. It's mine. It's mine. Thank you, Jesus. Money? You come to me. Does it have a name? Can you call it? You can call it in. And then once you call it in, then you start praising him. But what do we do? Now, i got to find out a way to get that money. You went back into the Old Testament of trying to do it yourself. Get your hands off of that. I used to do that. I'm not talking to you about that. I'm talking to me about that. And, and if you really get this here, 99.9% .9 of the time I'm talking about you and you all know I'm about me, not you. So now he says, and here's another one. Father, your word has become a part of me. Is the word become a part of you? Did it? How did you do that? Jesus come into my heart. He came in. He flooded you. He's like that mighty river that just whoosh. How could I give up drinking and smoking and cussing like I did? Think about that. Hey, I attended bar. You got to have a smart mouth on you, and then you got some guys that think they're so hot. <laughs> Get a real life, because when I drank, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. That's my only one ever. No, I'm not that. We didn't. Now they've got so much pushed at you. They, they're just pushing sex right down your throat. And you'll go, I don't think so. And then Lakita Garth, when she teaches, they, and they had this for the youth group, she wasn't. She kept herself. She was made a fun of, a lot of fun of. But you know what? A lot of people don't know that. And if you're not taught that, and if you've made that mistake, step over it and be done with it. God says you're brand new as if it never happened. Do you realize that? You're as clean as silk. Hmm? We got it. So, Father, your word has become flesh. <gasps> it is flowing in my bloodstream. It's flowing in my bloodstream, and it flows to every cell of my body. It is restoring and transforming my body, for your word has become flesh, for you sent your word, and you healed me. So, what are you doing? You're saying, devil, I heard enough of this kind of crap. I'm just... I'm taking, you, I'm done with you. I'm done. Listen, listen, I'm bought with a price. I don't own me. God owns me. He's responsible for me, and he takes care of me. The only thing I have to do is follow his word and do this, and I'm just fine. That's the way we got to get. But what do we do? Here I am, 70 years old, and I'm walking with a walker. Would you pray for me? Oh, sure, sure, sure. I'll pray for you. Is that what Andrew does? He says, let's have a little talk with Jesus. What are you going to change after you pray? But you know what? You can pray for that person. You can, and I'll pray for that person. I did that the other day. And then I turned around. And as I walked away, I said, Lord, I give that person to you. Holy Spirit, it's your job to teach him. Right? Because we are so dipped. We're so, di you know, and God says we're destroyed for lack of knowledge. And guys, we are. You didn't know all this stuff. If you'd have known then what you know now, you wouldn't have gotten yourself in trouble in some things. You, you understand what I just said? No, 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 no. You, you, I ain't going to put up with this anymore, right? So we're on this side of the victory. So we already have the victory, but now the devil's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And how is he doing it? He's trying to feed it to your mind, and you go, no, 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 no. I'm redeemed from the curse. I have prosperity. God's He bought me. He bought me with a ransom. Wow. That's what he does for us. He did it all. He owns do you own yourself? No. You know, I can do whatever I want. Yes, you can. But you know what? 
when it hits the fan, then what you going to do? But now, what was Dr. Dollar talking? He, he was talking about this is a time that Christians, you and I, are going to be called out to pray for people and expect these miracles. See, we can't hide anymore. A Christian used to be able to hide, and you wouldn't know they were a Christian. But now we're sticking out like a sore thumb. Why? Because they know good from evil. You understand what I said, don't you? So uh, we got the bread, we got the body, we got the, uh, Jesus did it all. We, but now when you have that relationship, when you have a relationship with somebody and you get to know them, you don't even have to talk to them sometimes. You just know what they're going to say. Husband and wife. I just about know what he's, and he just about know it. Because we have a relationship. Well, what kind of a relationship do you have with Jesus? Do you have an intimate relationship where you talk and you take communion and you praise and worship him for everything he's given you? Wow. Remember, he did it all. He paid a ransom for you. You're not your own. He bought you. You are his slave. And that's what Paul said. I am a slave to Christ. He said, I can do anything I want, but I've chose to be a slave because he purchased me. He paid a ransom for me. I love that idea that he bought me and he paid for me. And boy, when I figured that one out, I just fell in love with him because I thought I never felt good enough. You know, sometimes you're, you know, when you're a kid, that happens sometimes. Parents don't mean to do that to you. Don't get on that side of that. But when I saw that he bought me for a price and a ransom, I just parked there, and I just left it explode in my mind, and it just, it was good. So what do we say? When the devil comes at, what did he say? I know God loves me. I know God loves me. I know God loves me. Remember, I, I've been teaching you, and we speak to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Where do I find one of those scriptures beside Ephesians? How about Colossians? Look those up and start. And when he says, speak to yourself, he's saying, speak the word. Don't try to speak anything else. Speak the word. Right? When you feel pain, you say, victory, get off of me, pain. I'm healed. A bill. Bill, you're paid. Take communion over it. Listen, if you don't have communion with you and you're in the car or you're out doing something, just use your imagination to take that communion. But try, really, try every day to take communion. Start your morning off and just, I remember what you did for me. I remember you healed me. I remember you took care of every situation for my children, my grandchildren, my in-laws, every church member. You did it all. Boy, oh boy, I just give it all to you, and I thank you. I'm just going to flow with you, Holy Ghost. Speak to yourself. Why are you letting the devil speak to you? Well, I'm thinking it. Now, you got to go back to the Scripture, and when you hear Andrew Womack, and he says, you got to open your mouth and say it. The woman with the issue in blood, she kept saying it out loud. Because it goes in your ear gates and it gets down in there. So is God good? All the time. All the time. I'm done. So, Father, I thank you and I give you the glory and the honor. You are good and you're going to come back. Oh, you're going to be so happy, but you're going to go back. And... This, this is some of the things that he told me. How do you, did I write it down? How do you dress? How do you look? Do you look presentable when you go somewhere or do you stink? I mean, really, deodorant? It's, if you need some, I'll get you some. <laughs> deodorant? But do you look good? Do you look decent? I mean, you can even wear stripes and plaid like Pastor Kenny did golfing. Oh, I'll never forget that. I can't, I can't talk about it because that's too hard. But he smelled good. But I told him immediately, take that off, take that off. I said, if people really see him, Kyle? Yeah, they thought he looked pretty good. They kept on looking at him. He must have been good. And talking about, oh, yeah, they must have, they must have liked it. No, 
<laughs> so good thing it was in Florida. We didn't know anybody because, you know, sometimes the woman is responsible for how he dressed. You know how that do, they do that? Oh. Help, help. Then, then he tells us how to dress in the word. You go to Leviticus 11, 11. He tells us how to eat. And then he goes, what? He says to speak to yourself in songs and hymns and spiritual song, Ephesians and Colossians. He tells us exactly what to do. Because he bought us, now he's expecting us to take care of this earth suit. Does that make sense? So let's stand. Father, we thank you. You are holy. There's no one like you. Now, Daddy, all the people that have served this Memorial Day and that we're honoring you, Daddy, and the children, Father God, of each one of theirs, the memories of how they served. Oh, yes, Lord. I, I got to tell you this. I saw this. Um, Cordell took a picture of it. There was a picture of Earl, and he was pointing at his brother's name on the, on the, on the wall, on the wall with the names of the people who died. And here is Cordell this last year. Here he is kneeling down and pointing at the name. So here's father, here's son, pointing at uncle and brother. I thought that was pretty neat. Died in serving this country. That should never be. That should never be. But I'm going to tell you this again. Go back and look at the year of Jubilee. Look at the year of Jubilee. And open your mind to the Holy Ghost and let him fill it up with overturn, increase in every area of your life. Can you, can you handle that? If you get a bunch of money, could you handle it? Or would you spend it all? I, I, when I get money, I'm, better, I'm giving it away. I'm giving it away. I said, Lord, can I hang on to a little bit? Here I've been giving away $100 bills. I'm just going to listen to him. But I can use that. It's better invested that way than naturally for me because I know him so well. So, Daddy, you are good. You are good. So I bless each and every one here. And, Father God, that whole shooting that went on in Texas, I know without a shadow of a doubt that was a deep state that set that all up. Father, I give the parents to you. I give you, Lieutenant Governor, Governor, each one of these people. But the drither and dross will come to the top. And we pray for those families, for the heartaches, and we call peace over them, peace over them. Do you agree? In Jesus' name, God bless you. Have a wonderful day and tomorrow. Amen.